Let's start off by talking a bit about what food chains are. Food chains show one path of energy transfer, so they only show one path of energy transfer. And what that means is there would only be one producer, one primary consumer, one secondary consumer, and if possible, a tertiary consumer. An example of a food chain would look something like this. So to start off with, we have the plant here, which is our producer. And that plant get, transfers its energy, so 10% of its energy, goes to the grasshopper. When we are drawing food chains, it's important to note that the arrow goes from the source to where the energy is going. So in this case, the source is the plant and the grasshopper is the one that's taking the energy. So that's important to note. Next, the grasshopper is eaten by the scorpion. So we draw another line there. And lastly, the scorpion is eaten by the kit fox. So the energy goes upwards in this case, and this is an example of a food chain. This is how the energy flows in this ecosystem, but it's only one path because most of these organisms may have another organism that it preys on and it does not eat the same organism all the time. So this is just one possible path. And that's kind of the same with humans because we don't eat the same vegetable every day or the same meat every day. We tend to switch, we tend to eat different things. So it's similar to animals. And in order to represent this, we use something called food webs. Food webs are composed of multiple food chains and there is no single food chain that's present there and there are multiple in one food web. So let's take a look at an example. This is similar to the example that we had before. I'm going to draw out all the lines here. So the energy goes from the plant to the grasshopper, to the scorpion, to the kit fox. But now we are introduced with the ground squirrel in which the ground squirrel gets its energy from the plant, so it eats the plant, and the ground squirrel can be eaten by either the knit fox or the golden eagle in this ecosystem. So that shows how there can be different patterns that are possible. Now let's talk about what exactly are the producers, the consumers, and so on in this food web. Obviously we know our producer is the plant, then we have our primary consumer being the grasshopper, I'm abbreviate this with PC. And so is the ground squirrel because it does not eat anything but the plant in this particular food web. So we can call it a primary consumer. This is just one iteration of the food web and obviously there are multiple other animals that can play a role and factor into this um, food web which shows the energy transfer. Next, we have the scorpion, which feeds off of only the grasshopper in this particular food web. So that means it has to be the secondary consumer. Lastly, we have the kit fox, which eats the scorpion in this case. And we'll talk about what happens when it eats the ground fox. So in this case, it's considered the tertiary consumer. Now let's look at the other part of the food web. We have the ground squirrel, which is also a primary consumer. But when it's consumed by the golden eagle, the golden eagle becomes the secondary consumer. And since the kit fox is also preying on the primary consumer, it is also a secondary consumer in this scenario. Now, to represent the energy that's being transferred from one, to, uh, one organism to the next, we use something called the energy pyramid. This is a representation of all the energy that is present in a food chain or a food web, and it's to show how the energy is progressing. So let's take a look at it. Here's an example of a energy pyramid. First, we have the producers at the top. They have the most energy out of all of the others. Next, we have the primary consumer, which preys on the producers, and only 10% of 
what the producers have. So let's call this 100%. Let's say that all the energy is in the producers and make that 100%. So primary consumers only get 10% of the energy that's in that environment once they feed off the producers. The secondary consumers, since they prey on the primary consumers, they only get 1% of the energy because 10% of 10% is 1%. And lastly, the tertiary consumers get 0.1% of the energy. So as you progress to the top, there is less energy being transferred and therefore you need to be able to eat more in order to consume the same amount of energy. Now let's go back to the food web situation and think about what would happen if one of the organisms were to be eliminated from this food web. For example, if the kit fox were to be eliminated, we would have a rise in the golden eagle population if this was eliminated because there would be no competition from the kit fox for the ground squirrel. And since they both eat that, that would allow the golden eagle to have more prey. That's one example. And for example, if the grasshopper was gone, if we were to, let's change up the scenario and say that the grasshopper was gone, that would change the whole balance of the situation because the scorpions need to be able to learn to adapt and so does the kit fox. But the kit fox also has a um, secondary food food source. So its population would simply decline, but if the scorpion does not have any other food source, in this case, food web, this population would drastically drop almost until it gets to zero. But as uh, time progresses, scorpions will evolve if grasshoppers are eliminated forever, and they will be able to evolve to um, adapt and eat other organisms rather than just the grasshopper.